How do you publish a book in 2024? This is such a huge topic and it's an exciting topic in this particular day and age because in my opinion, there has never been a better time to be an author. We have more options and more paths to success than we've ever had before, but with that comes more decisions and sometimes that can feel paralyzing. So what we're gonna talk about today is some of the decisions you need to make along the way and how do you actually get your book in the hands of readers in 2024. So let's get started. This is a topic that I am super passionate about. I started publishing my books in 2010, and what I did was I took the indie publishing route, which was not as common or popular back in 2010 as it is now, and I decided to start my own publishing company, Dead River Books, and I self-published my books. That was the right choice for me, and 13 years later, I have now published 27 novels, most of them young adult or new adult fiction, mostly contemporary fantasy, and I have sold over 1 million copies of my books. So I love the self-publishing route, but in today's age, trad pub, self-publishing, direct sales, Kickstarters, there are so many options. And like I said in the intro, that means unlimited paths to success. And it means the freedom to really tailor your career to exactly who you are and exactly how you want to get your stories into the world. Even subscription models like Patreon and Ream Stories are becoming more and more common where you can get paid to write your rough drafts and to build community. So there are just infinite possibilities of how you can get your books into the world. But along with that comes the struggle of needing to learn what your options are so that you can make an informed decisions, just being aware of all the choices that you have, what are the best practices, what are the most guaranteed paths to success, even though there are no guarantees, some of that can start to feel really overwhelming. I can't cover every possible option and path and all the pros and cons in one short video, but what I do want to do today is get you started down a path of where you at least know what your choices are and where you need to go to find more information. So. Part of what I have done is created for you a, I think, eight or 10 page workbook called How to Publish in 2024. And you can grab that for free. I will leave the link down in the description box. When you sign up for my newsletter, you get access to this as well as dozens of other workbooks that go along with some of my videos, like how to plot a novel, how to edit a novel, how to write a series, how to plan out your writing year for 2024. You get all of that for free just by signing up. So go check that out, download this. There are links included as well as a self-publishing checklist that will help you figure out all the decisions and all the things you need to get together as you start publishing. That being said, I'm going to do the best I can to at least help you be aware of the choices that are out there and the different paths that people are using to get their books out there in 2024. So of course, one of the first choices is traditional publishing or indie publishing. So you can think of this sort of like, do I wanna have a boss or do I wanna be the, the boss? So if you're more of an entrepreneurial mindset and you like to have control over every aspect of your career, like pricing and marketing strategy, cover art, all of your edits and everything that goes into your story and exactly what you're writing, indie publishing might be right for you, which can also be called self-publishing. But if the thought of managing everything makes you feel super overwhelmed, and maybe if you're a little bit of a slower writer and you really want to be in bookstores and you want to have access to all of the prestige and um, all the editors and all of that help and guidance that comes along with being traditionally published, then you could also follow that route. And I feel like there used to be some stigma based on which route you took. But as we move into 2024, I think a lot of that stigma is gone. And it's really just a matter of choosing what works best for you. So if you choose traditional publishing, the way that you typically would start is you need a finished book, first of all. And to get a traditional publishing deal, it needs to be a book that is in a genre that publishers are currently looking for. And that can be shifting at <laughs> any given moment. But you need to do your research on the type of publisher you want to get out to, and particularly the type of agent you want to submit to. In the workbook and down below in the description, I have linked a couple of other YouTube channels where those authors actually have traditional publishing deals, and they can speak on this with more authority than I can. Authors like Alexa Dunn, who can teach you a little bit more about how to put together a query letter, which is where you typically start. So with traditional publishing, you have a finished book usually. If you've never sold anything before, 
you got to have a book for them to read. If you have sold before and you've already been making money, sometimes you can just submit a proposal for a book and then write it after you get a deal. But most of the time when you're just starting out, you need the book to be finished and it needs to be as good and well edited and polished as possible. Then you would write a query letter, which is going to have some kind of pitch or blurb about what the book is about. And it's going to hopefully hook an agent in on why they should represent you as an author. Then that agent will request pages from you or a manuscript from you. Hopefully you would find someone to sign with. They would help you polish that book and then it would go on submission with publishers. And of course, when we talk about traditional publishers, it sort of runs the gamut. You have the big New York publishers, the big like Penguin Random House Macmillan publishers that publish the majority of books that we see in bookstores, physical bookstores. And so if you want to deal with them, they usually do not take unagented submissions, meaning you're going to need that agent to get your foot in the door. And then hopefully one of them will purchase your book and you will receive an advance in return for the rights to publish your book. They will give you an advance. They will pay for your cover art. You will get to work with a professional editor and then your book will hopefully come out and be in the hands of readers, but they will handle a lot of the marketing aspects, even though you would still want to have your own website and your own social media presence, maybe your own newsletter, you wouldn't be in charge of distributing those books to bookstores. So that's kind of the traditional publishing route. There are smaller presses that will also potentially take unagented submissions, but I advise you to be really careful about what small publishers you work with. There are some legitimate ones and there are some that really prey on authors. So if you get approached by a small press that asks you to pay them for the privilege of publishing your book, run away. <laughs> Do not sign with that person. Make sure that it's either someone who's going to pay you in advance or who will at least be covering the cost for your cover art and things like that. You also want to make sure which rights you're signing away. So it's helpful to have an agent if you're going to go a traditional publishing route. What I'm going to talk about more here today is the indie publishing route, the self-publishing route, because that's what I chose and that has worked really well for me. Plus, there's a lot more choices and a lot more to learn if you decide to become an indie published author. So one of the first fundamental things to understand is that you have multiple formats that you're going to be creating as an indie author and each format can be considered a different set of rights. So you have eBooks, which is where the majority of indies make their money and make their name for themselves. You have print books, which can be paperbacks or hardcover books. And then you have audiobooks. And those are the three main formats that we'll be thinking about, but you can handle those separately or differently in terms of your rights and how you get them out into the world. So one of the first big choices to make about your eBooks is do you want them to be enrolled in KU, which is agreeing to make your book exclusive to Amazon, or do you want to be wide? And in the indie world, we call wide, meaning you're not exclusive to Amazon and your book books are widely available. Now I want to be clear here that I'm talking specifically about ebooks when we talk about Kindle Unlimited. Many of you probably are already aware of this, but Amazon has a monthly subscription for ebooks called Kindle Unlimited. A reader pays a monthly fee and for that fee, they can download and read as many books as they want throughout the month. And they don't own these books, they're borrowing them. They can borrow up to 20 at a time before they have to start returning them in exchange for a new book. But they can read as many as they want. In terms of payment structure for this, Amazon does not pay you per download the way they do when someone buys your book outright. Instead, they pay per page read. So let's say you have a 40,000 word book. Amazon is going to take that ebook and they're going to assign it a number of pages and they'll say, oh, this book has 150 pages in it. And if a reader downloads your book and that reader only reads five pages, you don't get paid the full price for that book. You just get paid for the five pages that they read. And in general, this is a variable amount per month because it's a whole pot that all authors get paid out of. It tends to be somewhere around 0 0.004 of a cent per page read. So I have left some links in the download for you if you want to read more about Kindle Unlimited because it would take a long time to go through how that program works here. But basically, when you enroll your book in Kindle Unlimited, you are saying my ebook will now be exclusive to Amazon, meaning you can't put it on your website, you can't hand it out for free, you can't sell it anywhere else, not even in box sets. It is exclusive to Amazon for 90 days. After that 90 day period, you are free to take it out of Amazon's exclusivity if you want and publish it wide, meaning widely available at Barnes and Noble and Google Play and other retailers. 
When a reader finds your book at Amazon and you are in Kindle Unlimited, they have a choice. They can either purchase your book for full price, in which case you'll get paid either a 70% royalty or a 35% royalty based on the price of your book, or they will download it for free inside their subscription. And that's when it kicks in that you get paid by the number of pages that they have read. But that locks your ebook into exclusivity at Amazon. Of course, there are pros and cons with that because you get a little bit more marketing at Amazon, maybe even a lot more marketing at Amazon. And that is where the largest pool of e-readers live and read their books. It also gives you access to free days and Kindle countdown deals and some other perks of being exclusive to Amazon. However, the biggest con there is that you've you're put all those ebook eggs into one basket and you are putting your entire career and income in Amazon's hands. So if anything goes wrong or your account gets banned, basically you're going to be scrambling to try to recover your income. So there's pros and cons to this. Another big thing to consider is that that Kindle Unlimited tends to uh, favor fast releases. So if you're a really slow author, you only publish maybe one book a year or one book every couple of years, Kindle Unlimited might be a real challenge for you. This is often the most successful authors there are people who are publishing three, four, 10, 15 books per year. And many of the authors who find great success inside Kindle Unlimited are also utilizing AMS ads, which is Amazon Marketing Services ads. So if you don't wanna take out ads, you don't wanna write to market, and and you definitely don't want to publish more than a couple of books a year, you might consider going wide. But just take everything that I'm saying about what works best with a grain of salt, because in any scenario, you're going to be able to find an author who only wrote one book in their whole life and still was a bestseller in Kindle Unlimited. So there is no hard and fast rule. It's just kind of seeing the lay of the land and seeing what's most common. So that's what I'm talking about is those commonalities. A lot of people consider it a faster path to growth to be a part of the Kindle Unlimited program, but it's a matter of do you want to see that fast growth or do you want to have the security of growing your business wide and getting access to readers all over so that if something happens at Amazon, you do have that larger fan base to, to draw on. This to me is not a decision to be taken lightly. And even though you're making a decision per book and it's not a permanent decision, there are a lot of considerations here because if you grow and cultivate a fan base that largely reads your books inside the Kindle Unlimited program, if you take your books out and you distribute them widely, a lot of those readers will no longer read your books because a lot of Kindle Unlimited readers, not all of them, don't come at me about this, not all of them, but a lot of Kindle Unlimited readers are very loyal to their Kindle Unlimited subscription. So if your books come out of that subscription, they're not gonna be willing to pay the three, four or $5 that you charge for the full price book. So just be aware that wherever you begin to cultivate your readership is where your readership is going to be. So if you change your marketing and publishing model, it will be like starting over, not in completely from scratch, but it will feel like starting over. So most authors are either all in KU or not in KU at all. You will see some people who will play kind of both sides of the fence that they'll release their book wide for a little while and then they'll put it into KU for 90 days and then pull it out. So there's all kinds of possibilities there, but I highly recommend that you read some of the links and do some research on KU versus wide. Now, when we talk about wide with our eBooks, we're talking about publishing to as many places as possible. So the big retailers are Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Apple Books, Kobo and Google Play Books. So those are kind of the big ones that most indies will publish their books to. And again, if you choose to go wide, you've got another choice here. When you're distributing wide, you can either choose to go through a third party aggregator, which I'll talk about in a second and explain what that is, or you can directly publish to each of these vendors. So if I decide to publish to each of these vendors, I would create an account at Amazon, an account at Barnes and Noble, an account at Google, an account at Apple, and so on. And I would, when I go to publish my book, upload my book directly to each of those sites. Each of those sites would gather royalties, and then they would pay me out individually. If I decide to go through a third party aggregator, then I can just upload to one place like draft to digital or publish drive or book baby or some of these other types of aggregators. And they will distribute my book to all those places. And then I will just get paid from that one location. Now, all of these options, except for publish drive, are free. So you can publish to Amazon for free. I've got links in your workbook of where you can go to sign up for your account 
account. So you would connect your account, you would put in your business or your personal social security number or whatever your tax ID is, and that connects your account. So all of these places where we're talking about publishing, Kindle, Amazon, Apple, all of these are free to publish too. And then they get their money when you get paid. So if I publish for free to Kindle Direct Publishing, KDP, they charge for my books and every 60 days they'll pay out 70% of what I made and they keep the other 30%. And that's pretty much how it works with all of these different vendors. When it comes to a third party aggregator like draft to digital, you don't pay anything initially, but when they get paid the 70% from Amazon, they will then take an additional, I think it's 10 or 15% off the top, and then they will pay you. So there is a fee on the back end, but at least it's free to use that service. For some of you, if you feel overwhelmed by the thought of managing all these different retailers and publishing directly, then it's easy enough to just make one account at draft to digital or a monthly fee to publish with Publish Drive or something like that, and you can can then just upload your book once and they will distribute it everywhere that they can. Google Play is a little bit trickier because you can't get to Google Play through most of these third-party aggregators. And even sometimes they aren't open for new authors. So you have to be a little bit more aware of what you're doing when it comes to Google Play books, but all the others work well with that. And in fact, places like draft to digital can also get you international distribution with your eBooks that you can't get directly. So it's a good idea to sign up for one of these aggregators or look into them with a little bit more depth. And again, those links are inside your workbook. For just a second, let's touch on print books. So that's all the things you need to know on a surface level about eBooks. Then you also have the idea of print books, and this can be paperback books or it can be hardcover books. This also is a big topic and we won't be able to go into everything here, but there are some main places that people tend to use to get their books into print. One again is KDP. It's the same dashboard, the same website that you use to upload your eBooks. You would also create a paperback there or a hardcover. It's important to note that there are a limited number of trim sizes and a trim size is just the width and height of your book. So there are a limited number of trim sizes and there's just a matte surface and there's a glossy surface. They can't do any kind of sprayed edges or foil or anything like that fancy at KDP, but the books are pretty good quality and a lot of people will use them. They also have hard covers at KDP, but they're case laminate and there's no dust jacket. So just read up on that, maybe watch some YouTube videos that will give you some examples. What you can do though is publish directly to Amazon through KDP, or you can use their expanded distribution to also have your book distributed to places like Barnes and Noble online. It's not going to get you into the stores, but it will at least allow readers to purchase your book at barnesandnoble.com. The royalty will just be less than it would be at Amazon. Because again, when you have Amazon distributing to Barnes and Noble, Amazon's going to take a cut and Barnes and Noble is going to take a cut. So you make less as an author. Another big one that people use is Ingram Spark. Now we'll put a little caveat in here that some people will use Ingram Spark for their eBooks, but I do not recommend it. If you're going to use Ingram Spark, just use them for your paperback and your hardcover books. You can get a dust jacket at Ingram Spark, and you can get some of the same trim sizes and options that you get at KDP at Ingram Spark as well. And the great thing about Ingram Spark is that they have wider distribution. So if you have a local bookstore, local libraries, and other places around you that you really want them to carry your book, you'll have much better luck if your book is available through the Ingram Spark catalog than if it were available through the Amazon KDP catalog. The reason behind this is because most independent bookstores, small bookstores, and even big box chains like Barnes and Noble order their books through Ingram Spark. They're not going to order their books through Amazon because they consider Amazon the competition. So if you want your books to be available in print locally or at bigger box chains, then the process for that is basically to publish your books through Ingram Spark. And then it's going to be up to you to actually go in and convince the book buyers at that local store or your local Barnes and Noble to actually carry your books. So that's one of those big differences between indie publishing and traditional publishing. 
You can also use draft to digital for your print books. That's another option that people have been using. And there are more than that. And some of them I have linked for you. If you want to publish your print books directly on your website and have them drop shipped from a third party, then Book Vault is another option for you. And again, all those links are there for you because I know I'm just covering this on a super surface level for you to get you started. Now, when you upload your eBooks, you're going to want an EPUB. So that's a digital book file. And and you're going to want a PNG or a JPEG in the right dimensions for your book cover. And you can find those dimensions at each of the retailers and what their requirements are. When you upload a paperback or hardcover book, you're going to want a PDF that is formatted specifically for the trim size of your book. So this is a five and a half by eight and a half size. So I need a template that is specifically made for this trim size in PDF. And I have some formatting softwares linked for you in the description and in the download for today. So one of the main ones that a lot of people love and use to format both ebooks and paperbacks is called Vellum. Vellum is beautiful. It does such a good job and it makes it easy to just go from a Word doc or a Google doc into a beautiful paperback book where you don't have to worry about like author name and all of that chapter title. It all just comes up so easily and seamlessly. Vellum, however, is only available for Macs. So if you don't have a Mac, then another one you could try is Atticus. Not as many features, a few more glitches, but it's really up and coming. And you might recognize the person who sells that and runs that, which is Dave Chesson from Kindlepreneur, who also has an amazing YouTube channel here that I highly recommend you check out if you're looking at self-publishing. So I will have his channel linked below. If you are on a budget, you can technically format your books through Word and Scrivener, but it can be such a headache, especially if you are not super tech savvy. So instead, I recommend that you use the free online tools from draft to digital or from Readsy. And again, those are going to both be linked in the workbook. Let me also just take a moment to encourage you that if you are definitely interested in learning all of this, but it already is starting to feel overwhelming, all these choices, all there is to know, and understanding that I'm just barely scratching the surface and there's a lot more detail in what you need to learn and how you can format your book and back matter and cover art best practices and all of that. If you know you're anxious to learn and you want to set yourself up for success, but you don't want to have to dig through through YouTube videos and websites to try to find the best information, then what you can do is sign up for my class, Publish and Thrive. It's only open twice a year. As I'm creating this video now, it is open only for another week. So we start on February 3rd and I will close enrollment at noon that day. It is a six week course, but you can really take it at your own pace. And it's great for people who haven't quite finished their book, but are looking already toward publishing in the future and they want to really set themselves up for success. Or it's great for people who have already published a few books, but you're maybe not quite seeing the results that you want to see. It is jam packed six weeks weeks full of everything from how to set up your business and your bank accounts and your taxes to how to format your books, how to write your books, how to do some market research and determine the best genre for your books and placement, keywords, categories, ISBNs, formatting. We cover everything. There's also two full weeks on marketing and an entire module on mindset and how to thrive long term. I am passionate about this class. And so I also give 13 hours of live Q&A to give you a chance to ask questions and make sure that you get feedback. And I run it twice a year. So whenever you're watching this, it's going to open in February and it's going to be open and running in August each year. So make sure you're on that newsletter to get in. Or if you're seeing this before it starts in February, come join us in Publish and Thrive next week. One big question that trips people up that we don't have time to go into because it's such a huge topic, again, is ISBNs. So I'm just going to leave just a brief explanation about ISBNs. You can read more in your workbook, but Key thing to remember, you do not need an ISBN for your eBooks. You can use one, but you don't have to have it. Other formats, hardcover, paperback, audiobooks, you have to have an ISBN. And your choices are, if you're in a country that gives you free ones, you can request them. Like Canada, you can request free ISBNs. Or if you're here in the US or some other countries, you have to purchase your ISBNs through Bowker or an, another authorized retailer. Here in the US, it's Bowker. I've also linked that in your workbook. Or you can use a free ISBN from the retailer that you're currently uploading to. So if you use KDP to upload your paperback, you can just use their free ISBN. And there's a lot of misinformation that goes around about ISBNs where people will say, if you use KDPs, they're going to own your copyright. 
all of that is untrue. There is no real big downside to using an ISBN that is free. It just means that if you decide to take your book and also publish it at Ingram Spark, you can't use that same ISBN because it belongs to Amazon. But it doesn't mean that your book belongs to Amazon. It just means that you're giving them the rights to distribute and sell it in their store. So just be clear about that. I've left some links for you if you want to read more about ISBNs, but there are some other tips and tricks there. But it's basically what you need to know is it's okay to use the free ones at each vendor, or if you want to purchase your own so that your book is actually tied to your own publishing company, you can do that as well. It just can get a little bit expensive. The next format that a lot of indies will use is audiobooks. And again, you have a little bit of a choice between exclusive to Amazon and Audible versus going wide. So if you want to use Amazon, you can use ACX, which is the Audible Creation Exchange. And you have a choice there of being exclusive to Amazon and Audible. And I think it also gets distributed to iTunes or not. And you can go there and be exclusive or not, same with Amazon. Or you can also use a different distributor, something like Findaway Voices that is now owned owned by Spotify, which will distribute wide to places like Audible, iTunes, and you can sell it directly on your website and things like that. Now, one of the big hot button topics for 2024 when it comes to audiobooks is human narration versus AI narration. And this is a super hot topic, a super controversial topic, because everyone is honestly afraid that the more we move toward AI, the more we're going to alienate true artists, actresses, actors, human narration, human written books. There's a lot that is scary about AI. There's also ethical questions about whether we should be using AI. And I think all of these questions are good. What I encourage you against, though, is lashing out or judging other people for their choices. Focus on your own choices and what aligns for you and keep moving down that path. If you want to use AI narrated books, I have left some links for you in there, but you can basically use Google Books, you can use Amazon's new AI tool, and there are other AI tools like Book Baby, where you can have your book narrated very quickly by an AI voice, and it is much cheaper than paying a human narrator. When you have your book narrated by a human, of course, you're paying for their depth, for their expertise expertise and experience, and you're paying for that human emotion in your books. And so you're going to be paying more, but you will get a better quality book. So you can do both. You can produce your book in AI and charge less for that one, and then human narrated and charge a little bit more. There's lots of options for how to do this. When you do an audiobook through ACX, you have the option to pay nothing up front and hire an, a narrator who is agreeing to split the profits with you for the next seven years, or you can just pay them per finished hour, which means if your book is five hours, you would just pay them two or $300 per finished hour, and you would own all the rights and you would get all the profits once that book goes on sale. So there's lots of things to consider. And I know I've covered so many things. And honestly, this is still just the tip of the iceberg. So we have direct sales where you're selling your ebooks, audiobooks, merch, paperbacks, signed paperbacks, all kinds of stuff on your own website, which is really something a lot more authors are moving toward in 2024. What they're doing is usually setting up something like a Shopify store or Payhip and sometimes using Book Funnel, which I also have linked for you down below in order to distribute their books, especially ebooks, or they're using a site like Book Vault to drop ship their books in paperback. So there's more and more technology becoming available to authors, but don't get overwhelmed. You don't have to do all of these things. You can just start with ebooks and then grow and iterate as you go. And that is totally fine. I don't have a direct sales website. I've still sold a million books and most of those have been ebooks. I don't have many of my books in audio yet. That's coming this year. So don't feel like you have to do it all at once. It's okay to grow as you get more familiar and more comfortable with each of these choices. Another thing more people are doing is Kickstarter campaigns. So this Kickstarter is a crowdfunding site that you may have heard from uh, one of the biggest Kickstarters of all time or the biggest was Brandon Sanderson's Kickstarter in 2022 or 2023, where he made millions and millions of dollars to get some of his books self-published and in the hands of his readers. And you are seeing more and more authors launching five and six figure campaigns for special edition hardcovers, gold foiling, sprayed edges, or brand new releases. So Kickstarter is something to keep an eye on. And I have linked a book by my friends, Russell and Monica called Get Your Book Selling on Kickstarter if you want a place to start. I also have linked a book down below about direct sales from Morgana Best, who also knows a lot about this and has made a lot of money selling books directly on her own website. Another thing that I'm going to be diving into this year is things like Ream Stories, where you set up a monthly subscription 
subscription for your readers to read and join in community. So that's going to be fun. So like I said, so many options and we have just barely scratched the surface. And I'm excited to dive deeper into some of these topics if you guys want to hear about them. So definitely leave that comment down below if there's something you want to see more on. Now, I promised you a checklist, so I've got it here. So basically, I'm going to run through this as quickly as I can. First thing you want to do is write a great book. Then you're going to want to make decisions about where that book goes. Agent, editor, does it go to a publisher? Are you going to get it into audiobook, foreign translations? Write a great book. That's the fundamental. For most of us though, especially on the indie path, one book is not enough. So you also need a great publishing strategy. You need to think about not just that one book, but what are your first three to five books going to be? And you're gonna find so much better success faster if you're writing all three to five of those books under the same pen name, in the same genre or even the same niche or even the same series. That is how most people find success. Not one YA, one sci-fi, one fantasy, one this. I know we as writers have a lot of ideas, but if you really want to be most successful in 2024, I highly recommend that you come up with a cohesive publishing strategy that has you finding the right loyal readers for your books. One of the most important things that you can do is figure out who's my ideal reader, exactly what genre am I writing, and what do readers love about that genre? And then package your book in terms of the blurb, the content, the cover art, the keywords, the title, everything in a way that is going to be a magnet for those ideal readers, that your ideal readers will be able to take one look at that book and say, oh my gosh, that's the kind of YA zombie book I love most. And they will buy it instantly. If you can nail that, you are going to have a career that lasts because it's the single most important thing. And that's not just 2024. That's all always. So write a great book, create your publishing strategy using market research and your understanding of that genre. Decide on a legal pen name. You can use your own name, but I think that more and more authors are beginning to trademark their names. So do a quick trademark search. Make sure that your name is not taken and make sure if you decide to use a pseudonym or pen name that you can legally use it before you start uploading your book. Then you're going to want to get a website and a web domain and social media accounts with that name. So Sarah Cannon is what I use. It's my maiden name. So I have sarahcannon.com. I'm Sarah Cannon on Instagram and all across the web, including here on YouTube. So then you're going to want to create the retailer accounts that you need. So if you decided you're just going to go exclusive to Amazon, you'll need to create an account at KDP, which is Kindle Direct Publishing. If you want to go wide, you'll have to create each of those accounts or create an account at a place like draft to digital and at that point, you'll want to make sure you've got your business set up and you have a business bank account. A business bank account is not an absolute must have, but it can be really nice to keep your expenses and your income for your business separate from your personal. But there's a lot to decide as well about whether you're going to be a sole proprietor or an LLC and all of that. And we don't have time to go into it here, but we do go into that in my course, Publish and Thrive, which includes international business setup. So if you're interested in that, come join us. Then you might want to create some author branding, like a website or a special lo logo or monogram for your author brand, maybe a series of colors that you like to use a lot. Then you're going to want to decide your book title, your book series title. And again, I would look through trademarks. I would look through Amazon, Apple Books, and see if anyone else has used those titles. You can't copyright a title. So you might search for a book title like Into Darkness, and there might be 50 books with that same title, and it's okay to use that as long as it's not trademarked. But for the most part, you at least want to try to choose a series title that is unique to your books or to your world so that it sets you up for success. Then you want to write a compelling book description. The best way to learn how to do this is honestly to pick up 10 or 20 books or go search them out on Amazon or go look at them in your local bookstore and read the back cover blurbs. You'll see that most of them will have some kind of tagline at the top and then it will go into who's your protagonist what's the major conflict and what's the major story question in this book but the more you can study blurbs the more you will get adept at being able to write them in a way that entices readers then you're also going to want to purchase or create your own cover art. So purchasing cover art, if you're on a budget, means that you can look for pre-made covers, which is covers that people have already made and they're selling at a discount sort of to advertise their services. Or you can have a custom book cover created, and those can range from $50 to $1,000 or even more if you're doing a custom photo shoot, or you can make your own. But again, 
making your own is really only something you should do if you understand the legalities of royalty-free images, making sure you have the rights to use the fonts, and that you have a design eye and you can create a cover that is going to appeal to your ideal reader. This is one of the most important parts of packaging your book. So this is where I would make sure to invest some money if you don't have an eye for design. You also might want to create an author newsletter, some way to reach out to your fans directly. When someone buys a book on Amazon, I don't get their email address. I can't reach out to them. Amazon can, but I can't. So I try in the back of my book to give them some incentive for signing up for my newsletter. If you want to read more about really great author newsletters, I highly recommend a book called Newsletter Ninja by Tammy Labreck. It is a must read for all indies and I have linked it down below. You also might want to create a website for your author brand where you at least at minimum, if you don't have a blog, you at least have links of where to buy your books and where people can follow you. Then you're going to want to format your book, print or ebook. And again, I've given you some formatting software linked below. Then you're going to upload to each retailer of your choice and get those books up. When you upload, you're going to want all of your metadata. And again, I've explained metadata in the workbook that I'm giving you for free, but it's basically all the data related to your book. So we're looking at your book title, the author name, the blurb, the ISBN, all of that stuff is part of your metadata. And you want to make sure that you have it somewhere in a spreadsheet or a Google Doc or something that you can reference so that it's consistent across all of the different retailers. And then basically you just market and promote that book. Now we don't have time to go into the strategy of using pre-orders or not using pre-orders, but if you want to hear more about any of these specific topics, make sure to either join my course Publish and Thrive or comment down below and I can add some of these topics to my YouTube content calendar for the year. But basically you would just start promoting and there's just, I could say, literally 50 videos worth of how to market your books and get those out there. I will have a video coming up soon about how to revive your backlist. And some of that is going to be helpful for people just getting started. Because even though I have published 27 novels, my sales have slowed way down over the past couple of years, because I've been focused on teaching other authors and sharing what I know more than I have been on publishing new books. But I have a new book coming out in the next few months. And so I want to get that backlist going up. So make sure you're subscribed so you can hear about all the marketing tactics I am using and my strategy for reviving all of my backlist books and promoting my new books as well. And of course, the final thing on the list is to just keep writing because your most valuable marketing tool is your next book. And so it can be great to focus on all this business stuff, all the marketing, getting your books out in the world. But one of the best things you can do for your career is to keep writing, keep giving those readers what they want. And if you can do that, then you can build a successful career where you will truly thrive long term. So super long video, super surface level, I know, but I hope that you'll download this freebie. Come join my newsletter list. Come join us in Publish and Thrive. I also have another course coming up this weekend that is called Your Path Forward that will help you map out your long-term strategy and goals and so many more videos coming up soon. So make sure you subscribe, hit the like button, comment down below and let me know any topics you want to hear me go into more depth on and make sure you grab my most recent workbook. Whew, I know that's a lot of talking. It's a lot of info to go through in a quick period of time, but I hope this was helpful for you. Keep me updated on how your publishing is going. Truly congratulations for getting to this point in your career. I'm so proud of you and I'm going to be forever your cheerleader. So wishing you the best. I will see you in my next video. Bye.